Hold on a second. What's that behind you, Ludi? Is that the World of Warcraft? Of course you know what that is, but can you tell me what this is? I didn't think so. Apparently a highly motivated group of individuals decided to make a mod for the World of Warcraft and you will be pleasantly surprised to see how much flavor this mod actually has. If you want me to cover the Elder Scrolls mod for EU4, let's get this video to 9000 likes. And consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like these in the future. Clearly I don't know what anything is here because I'm not an avid World of Warcraft player. I used to play it a very very long time ago, like a hundred years ago when it first came out. So I am aware that Stormwind exists. Because of that, we will be playing as them. Surprisingly, when you play as a nation, you actually can see the rest of the world. That is, not gonna lie, pretty impressive. I would have imagined some fog of war would exist, but nope, apparently no fog of war. There's definitely a lot of islands and a lot of new worlds. When I used to play this game, there used to be only two. This one, and this one. That's pretty much it, nothing else. Now there's a lot more. Is this where the pandas are guys? I think I also remember the panda land. I think this is the panda land. Am I, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments and you can trash me for not knowing World of Warcraft. Aside from all the multitude of different nations, they also made sure that all the cultures are as accurate as possible. The Stormwindians are basically the humans. You can see here it says human and Stormwindion. We apparently got more humans in the north over here. Lots of humans in our continent. Is there any any humans other places there are humans here lorderon oh isn't this the same guys there it is the same guys all right so all jokes aside guys lorderon essentially had an expedition in these areas and these are basically colonizable lands i'm assuming yes it is actually not yet colonized and has the potential to get colonized whoa oh this is cool so najatar is one of the naga nations and of course they are basically underwater dwellers because of that the these provinces are actually special underwater provinces with tons of gemstones. Mmm, looks like uh, my kind of underwater. Never realized there's this many Tarin in the Horde lands. Nor did I realize there's this many centaurs and harpies. They're basically everywhere, dude. Holy mother of God. Okay, I just saw something. All right, this is where the pandas are, guys. Pandaren. Pandaren. These are the pandas over here. Clearly, they're not in the northern part. I need to get my World of Warcraft lore in order. Because I'm just embarrassing myself right now. Am I right, guys? Let's actually get back to our nation here first off. And let's see what's new in this mod. So, we got Marines as our starting special infantry. Wow, I never knew that. Mercenary companies have been implemented fully. We apparently have the Confucian system, I'm assuming, here. Where you assimilate other religions as part of the uh, human religion. Brotherhood of the Northshire. We got a few vassals around with uh, Red Ridge being a little bit more disturbed loyal that's easy fixable we can just uh, placate them a little bit there you go now they should be more loyal towards us a few thousand troops not bad we're gonna have to increase this a little bit let's go ahead and get a few more troopers to also set up our estates oh wow that's actually a lot of new stuff for the estates invest in diplomatic courts that gives us a hundred diplo power and it costs 300 ducats whoa essentially we can buy mana points with ducats that is so cool man not gonna lie that's actually super cool and you can also seek advisor all of these do increase the influence of your estate so keep that in mind let's summon the council first and go for whichever agenda best suits us i would say production dev in this province is not such a bad idea so from what i can tell here it's essentially exactly the same like in uh the base vanilla with a few added privileges that make a little bit of a difference i like this one movement speed privilege is actually insanely cool never saw that in any other mods so i like to see that it's a little bit different from the other ones lowered the cost for the advisor privileges though it's only minus 10 percent instead of minus 25 percent still worth it though definitely still worth it essentially about the same thing as in vanilla here so we're gonna sell the crownlands then we're gonna dev up one province here and now we can also seize crownlands and we only get 0.20 autonomy rather than more than that one thing i also noticed is the fact that you actually have holy orders and there's quite a few of them tax local goods produced unrest production efficiency dev cost modifier manpower and each of them cost around 200 mana points 
So if you do decide to go for one of these, make sure that you have the mana points and that you really want to go for it. Oh, we have the Ikta government type apparently, but it's renamed and they got new icons. I like to see that actually. That also helps out with the uh, disloyal vassals. So it's a double bonus essentially. Send your heir to train. Okay, sure. We can we can train him as a warrior. No, as a paladin. He's going to be a paladin. We can form a lot of new empires actually. Empire of Arathar, New Arathar, Theramon or Bastion of the Faith, which is not that hard to do, actually. Just 500 ducats. Till the death of our leader, we get a massive amount of bonuses equivalent to the Defender of the Faith. There's a ton of new decisions as well. I really like the flavor they added in this mod. The reason I also wanted to highlight this mod, guys, is because I know not many people play it, and it's not just like a change of map or anything of the sorts. They actually made this super playable. They've even taken all the time to get new icons and and just the icons alone and refitting these icons from a modding perspective, it takes a really long time to do that. So massive kudos to you guys for it. We also have a lot more ideas we can unlock all the way to 40. So that's tech 40. We start with tech one. I'm actually curious what the uh, golden ages are. The rise of the horde is the first one. So that's essentially going to focus on uniting the orcs under one banner. It even says it here, everybody. Come on. Dev cost reduction, aggressive expansion, prestige, decay, unrest, quite a few interesting ones some unique ones for the black rock bleeding hollow fort defense carabor and shatrath i don't know what the other ones are because i i'm not getting anything once i hover over them but i assume it's something to do with uh, the lore of the world of warcraft so if you know the lore you probably know better than me what that is all about institution wise we got societal code first standardized measures irrigation urban planning oh my god that's really a lot of these how many years can you play this game for I feel like they made it so you actually can play the game for a lot longer than vanilla e4. Oh, and guys, look at this, by the way. They actually added in a ton of new reforms. Not only the first ones and not only the icons, but look at this. These are actually super different. Manpower, but it lowers your reputation because basically it's, you know, it's it's slavery, guys. We also got serfdom, which is basically the same. Guild labor, commissions, and peasantry. Wow, it's really interesting. And I like the fact that they've actually added these different different for every race so you do have a ton of choices tier 24 oh my lord until how many years can you play this dude i feel like this is at least a thousand years of content right here for the world of warcraft world let's see if we got any cores at the start we do have some cores everyone we do have some cores on the woods of elwyn okay and on this area as well do our vassals have any cores they do as well boys red ridge has a ton of them on the gnome lands or the no land better yet okay i think we can definitely try our luck at starting an early easy war against one of these boys let's get our armies fixed first whoa this is different from the base game estate in control so apparently if you have less than a certain amount of uh, crownlands the estates are essentially in control i see and i think that would work actually pretty nicely in the base game to prevent people or better yet to encourage people to get the plus one uh privileges once they have the available crownlands instead of doing the cheese early game like i do all the time so right now what i'm getting is that the uh, dark sure is uh, a noble republic so they're more liberal than us the westfall is essentially a march the red ridge about the same thing except they're not marches they're vassals actually and the marches are actually the dark sure and the mages republic or majocracy so these guys are mages karazhan oh i know this i actually remember this from uh the warcraft what control subject as the overlord we can take control of the administration at any time no way oh my god i want to know what this does does this integrate them fully or do i just switch on over and play as that nation i have a strong feeling that i'm gonna play as that nation by clicking this button i'm not gonna click it just yet hold on a second boys Oh, that was really fast. My king just died. The new guy is going to be a militaristic king, of course. And he's also a Chad Lord 634. Whoa, boy. Calm your tits down, eh? Hot diggity dong, actually. And the air is not that bad either. We do lose one stability, so we're going to have to get this back up. I just noticed, but we actually start with the absolutism mechanics enabled. And we have minus 47, so I really need to get a little bit of absolutism if I want to have a bit of quick experience. 
expansion. I also got an alliance with the Thorium Brotherhood, which I have no idea what they are. Apparently they're dwarves. Okay, the Dark Iron Dwarves for that matter. It's quite a few dwarves in uh, this continent at least. The Wild Hammer, the Iron Forge, more Wild Hammer in the north. And do we have anything else around the other parts of the world? No, apparently that's the only areas that you can find uh, dwarves in. I'm getting my troops in position. I'm going to attack both River Paw as well as the uh, Knolls over here to get my cores. And the best part is that they have an alliance with each other. So it's going to be a big fat war against everybody. So we'll be cobalidrating Shadow Hide, River Paw, and we're calling in the Thorium Brotherhood. Men and dwarves fighting together for the freedom of all the alliance members. I guess in World of Warcraft terms, I should say for the alliance? You can't run away, you filthy gnomes. Wait, what? The gnomes have artillery? Excuse them, what? All right, actually, we do start with catapults and bomb slingers as the first type of artillery. And the warriors also have fire pips. We start from tech one with fire pips. That is pretty impressive, not gonna lie. That essentially means that they've actually revamped the combat system as well for this mod. Looks like a third party is also fighting against the uh, river paw. But I'm gonna try and get a hold of the provinces myself first before anybody else does. Oh man, they took the siege here, really? The dwarves are in danger. Let's go help out our friendly dwarf neighbors. Oh no, they lost the battle, but we're still gonna intercept these uh, filthy gnolls. We got a zero. Are you kidding me? Why do I keep getting zeros? A, a second zero. Are you serious right now? All the time when I'm recording, man, I keep getting them zeros, bro. But at least it was still a stack wipe, surprisingly. Apparently, we got better than the gnolls have. One more thing I really want to say is that this mod is actually super fluid. I'm not lagging, and I even see the entire world, and I'm not lagging for that matter. And I also have a pretty big war now, and I'm not lagging for that matter. I know I keep repeating myself, but the point is that this is probably my favorite complete overhaul mod that I've uh, reviewed on the channel so far. Oh yeah, bastards trying to kill my boys off eh? So I'm at war with these two guys, these boys, and who else? All right, these guys to the north. I think the dwarves are taking care of them though. Oh, we got to make it here in time. We did make it in time. And we crushed them as well. Also want to mention that there's a lot more disasters you can have from the start, including the court and country disaster, the estates coup and so on, aspirations of liberty. So you got to be careful and go through whichever disasters you might have, depending on the nation that you play as with this mod. All right, so let's get these guys out of the war. We basically completely wiped out their armies. We're going to give all of these back to my vassal, except the coastline I'm taking for myself directly. Take a bit of money that we can get as well. Noise. Look at this beautiful border gore here. And because we got this directly, we have both an opening to the west and to the eastern parts of the continent. Oh, because I have this province, I also can declare a holy war against the Atal Eye. I don't know what the Atal Eye is, but I like the idea of a holy war, so let's go ahead and kill them off. I'm gonna go to the map culture modes to see what these guys are. They're murlocs. Murlocs and trolls. I'm fighting murlocs and trolls. Let's actually start hiring some artillery. I want to get at least four units of artillery to help out with the sieges in the early game. Plus, in this mod, artillery is actually insanely overpowered. Look at this. You got three fire pips as your first starting artillery. Compare this to the regular units, which only have two fire pips. It's a massive difference. Oh my god, I just saw the building system. First off, kudos to the fact that they actually put the image of Stormwind here. Look at these buildings. We got temple, marketplace, mine, farm, internment camp? Okay, that is interesting. It gives culture conversion cost and local unrest. And we got the tavern that offers friendly movement speed. All of these get upgraded and give out double bonuses on the second upgrade. Then we also get towers, attrition for enemy, training ring, dockyards, shipyards, arsenal for supply modifier, and barracks for manpower. Again, they get upgraded and they get double the benefits after. And we get the outpost that can be upgraded to a bastion. This is the fort, essentially. Plus, the manufacturers give out the same thing but we also have citadel as a special building the barracks essentially are the soldiers households and the stables give out movement speed on provinces that have flying mounts or war beasts wow we also get portals and portals let you teleport troops between provinces oh my god this is actually insane the portals can be used for teleporting troops between provinces with the same portal color so for example if if I build a red portal in this province and another red portal in this province, I can teleport my troops between these two provinces instantly. That is insane!
insane. We also get the Stormwind Keyer, which offers mad power and a few other benefits. We also can invest ducats and 1000 ducats actually gives us one development point if we have too much ducats, I guess. And we also can establish a center of trade for 5000 ducats. Honestly, dude, this is insane. I really hope more mods use these features because these are absolutely brilliant. Hands down, the best construction system I've ever seen in any mod so far. Since we're at it, let's actually also check the goods produced. So we obviously have the base U4 goods, but we have a lot of new stuff like stone over here. We got army supplies, granaries, mounts, arcane, and so many other goods. It's absolutely astonishing, man. This really actually feels like a proper game onto itself rather than just being a mod. Like everything, starting from the icons to some of the systems are completely different compared to the base U4 game. Come on, boys, we gotta win this. I know we attacked in a marsh, but we still gotta win this, sir. We got the worst score. We can peace out, boys, here. And we got quite a few lands in the marshes, which means that we can start building the internment camps that lets us convert these provinces to humans a lot faster. I'm basically role-playing United States in the Second World War. And finally, we can also peace these boys out. I'm gonna go for the full annexation. I am getting a bit of a coalition now, but who cares? I'm basically the biggest nation in this area. And of course, give all of these lands to my uh, vassalan over here. Look at this, boys. When we go to the player map mode, we essentially have about 20% of this particular continent here. It's gonna take a little bit of time to core all of this stuff, however, so whilst we're we're doing that we're also gonna try and integrate uh, these boys over here a thousand seventy two to integrate them they're gonna be the first to integrate however our crown loans also increased to 11.5 from taking all of these newly added lands around here I feel like I also want to get rid of the Emergils we got a core on one of their provinces so we got to uh, start our assault on them we can also do our second reform I think the best option would be guild labor which is the one that doesn't offer massive debuffs Twilight hammer as the orc clans begin to enter a state of conflict something 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 orcs have arrived essentially i assume but this as far as i know should happen in this area rather than my area elwin bandits completely annihilated their rival and i will attack them but they're also allied to the thorium brotherhood my allies so I'll attack him after I finish this war and after I core up some of my other stuff. I have a lot of things I need to core up. And I have the estate coup that's about to trigger also sad. It's not easy leading the humans, okay? It's not easy. Oh god, we're losing all of our crownlands essentially. Yup, we got no crownlands right now, bruh. This also spawns some rebels in here, so let's quickly get rid of them. Buyashaka, boys, buyashaka. Definitely worth barraging and assaulting this to quickly take it back. And by killing off the rebels, we actually got 20% crownlands. I feel like this is a bit of an exploit. So essentially what happens is after you get the estate coup and you lose all the crownlands, you get the rebels spawn in and after you kill the rebels, you get more crownlands that you had before. Not gonna lie, highly exploitable, but I like it. I actually like it. I just saw that my dwarven allies doubled their army size. So I'm gonna postpone the war against these guys for a little while until my manpower recovers a bit. I do have an insanely huge army when it comes to my vassals armies but obviously I don't want to have a smaller army than my vassals otherwise they're gonna start getting a little bit more disloyal than I'm comfortable with also no more expansion after these guys are out here because we've basically consolidated this entire region we just need to take these guys out but I need to also wait for my overextension to go down a little bit as well and aside from that I kind of need to focus on my economy and on my army as I have a suspicion something big is gonna be coming soon. I actually just realized but the entirety of the south part of this continent is a mixture of trolls and murlocs. Are you kidding me my king died again? What the hell man? They live for like two years each? Why are they dying so quickly? I think I will also accept the uh, gnolls as a culture and the iron forge since they are dwarfs and I want good relations with the dwarfs. We can also sell some titles and siege crownlands right after that which means we can actually fix our economy a little bit. I've also noticed that there's some other decisions that 
that just popped out here stopped the awakening of various people. I got no idea who this is, but I assume that we kind of need to do this. Awakening of anybody sounds pretty bad to me, man. The way that money works in this mod is also very different from the base game because look at this. If we build a mine, we're getting peanuts from this. Similarly, we're getting basically peanuts from building the temple and pretty much anything else. So in order to actually get a lot of income, I guess the only way is war, at least in the early game. I just realized the difference between forming Arathor and New Arathor is that New Arathor is essentially the south part of this continent. Everything that you see highlighted right now is what you need in order to form New Arathor, whilst uh, the Empire of Arathor, we just need to get the human capitals from here, essentially the capitals of Lordaeron, Alterac, and uh, Dalaran, as well as a thousand development and a few other things. And essentially every culture changes to Arathorian once that happens, or I'm assuming every culture that is a Stormwindian changes to Arathorian, or better yet, human. The Twilight Grove is a green dragonfly culture, and it's a vassal of the green dragonfly, which is on a completely different continent. They're all the way in the northern continent here, so I have no idea how that works. These guys must have a lot of vassals around the entire world. They do, apparently. One in Darkshire, one over here, a few more in the northern continent, and some other ones in these areas areas as well. What is this red thing? Is this at war with them? They're at war with the nation that they have no common border with. How are they even going to deal with that war? Wow, they actually got war score in that. So they actually had to go all the way here in order to fight them. Wow. There's so many scripted events that it actually makes me feel bad that I don't know as much about the WoW lore as I should know. Oh, dude, look at this, man. The mission system also has been changed. The icons are very different and we have specific missions for our nation as well as missions that you have for all the nations essentially eliminate the murloc threat well that's an understatement considering there's basically murlocs everywhere around us integrate the region essentially after we've integrated all of our vassals for this one and until the end of the game plus one prestige until the end of the game plus 10 manpower again 10 production till the end of the game all of these are literally until the end of the game okay that's a little bit overpowered shock damage received fort defense morale of army and I kid you not, these are literally all until the end of the game. Don't forget to leave a like if you want me to cover the Elder Scrolls mod. And let me know in the comments if you want me to continue this campaign. And also check out this awesome Portugal video. Until the next time. And I want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members, Patreon members, as well as my Twitch supporters. I really wouldn't be able to do this without all of your support.